Personally, filet mignon doesn't really do it for me. I want a bone-in prime rib, you know, giant hunk of meat where the fat is just basting it for hours. You can definitely do this in your oven at home. And I've done it. It just doesn't have the same flavor as in a wood oven. So, I think it makes more sense to take that chop, cook it in a pan, baste it in butter with garlic and herbs. It's the way to go. All you need is salt and pepper because a great piece of meat like this should taste of meat and really not a whole lot else. So I thought we would make some mashed potatoes with this, but I like to do 50% celery root. I think it lightens it up, makes it way less heavy. So we start with a russet potato. It's got a high starch content, and that's gonna make it fall apart when we boil it in the water. You wouldn't want to use a waxy potato for something like this. Our celery root. Must do the same. Just gonna put some salt in the water. I really just wanna boil the heck out of these. So here's a potato, and this is how soft it is. What one needs is a large cast iron skillet, and then one should place the heat on high. The salt here has pulled a little bit of moisture out. Well, if it's wet, then the first thing that this, the heat from the pan is going to do is bring up the temperature of the water until it can boil and evaporate away. If it's under the steak, it's gonna steam up through the steak. And then rather than create a crust, it's gonna open up the pores of the meat and all the juices are gonna spill out and we're not gonna get a crust. Olive oil is a terrible idea. It's gonna break down at like 350 degrees, which is entirely too low. A little bit of grapeseed oil, which has a very high smoke point. Look at that. So that's why we're putting the oil in the pan, you see, because that middle part is shrinking up, and when you have oil, it's, it, it kind of makes up for the inconsistencies in the non-linearity of the steak. A deep fry obviously cooks everything because nothing isn't touched by the hot oil. All right, we have a nice sear. We're gonna go into the oven now. Now that our potatoes and celery roots have been boiled to oblivion, we will dump them. Ooh. Rather than Heavy cream, I go with the creme fraiche. And we can use a healthy amount of that. A little whisk. Well, my whisk is just... One, two, steak coming out. Ready for our next move? Two tablespoons of butter. I'm gonna throw our crushed garlic in there as well. I'm gonna come back on our high heat over here. We're at 49 centigrade. I know I wanna to get to about 55. So this is the perfect amount of time for us to get the base thing that we need to do done. Get a non-silver spoon. Put the thyme on top since so it doesn't pop. Yeah, silver spoon's gonna uh, attract a lot of heat. Your hand's gonna burn. Now you need to let this rest, and you can't just put it on a plate, because if you put it on a plate, the same thing's gonna happen that if you didn't dry off your meat, which is that you're gonna create a steam layer, and the pores are gonna open, and all the juice is gonna fall out. So, perhaps your argument is, gee, Frank, I don't have a cooling rack. Well, that's okay. Nowadays, everyone's selling sushi. These sticks will work just fine. All right. Should we put a little steak butter in there? We can throw that garlic in there as well. We're gonna redirect the flow of the resting juices. Now, all these juices right here, Right into potatoes. So the first thing we'll do is we'll cut the bone off. All right. Put that right there. The 
This is called the chuck roll. This is one of the most delicious things ever. And you can see the fibers are going this way. And we want to cut against the fibers. Like that. If you have a dull knife, you're going to be pushing. And again, you're going to push juices out of the steak. Okay, so I'm sort of sawing very lightly and I'm putting almost no pressure. Okay, and now we can just sort of take our knife and push it down and it'll fan. So we can put some right here. right in here because it looks great. And you can see it's very, very, very juicy. Mm -hmm. mm. Delicious crust. The finishing salt is super duper important. I don't think it really gets a whole lot better than that in an apartment. The butter based on that is so good. This is, <laughs> this is Luke. He writes all the music for the show. Why don't you come off the bone here? Yeah? Yeah, that's going to be good. Mm. Is it better than the prime milk? Mm -hmm. It's not better than the primer in the oven, but it's still really good. It's really good. Okay. We like to be honest on Frankie Cooks. What do you think of the finishing salt? Yeah, that's the chuck roll. Chuck roll. It's so good. The thyme is really delicious, mm -hmm. particularly. Totally worth it. Let's yeah. try some of these uh, non-starch potatoes. Well, they're starch, they're just reduced starch. <laughs> mm. Right? Nice and light. I love the celery root. I think it's really good. And it's I like that you didn't really mash it, too. Yeah. They're still kind of little squares. You know, when it's too mashed, it looks like it came out of a box, don't you think? It's got some texture. It's got some texture, but it still falls apart. It's not like it's you're chilling totally on anything. As soon as it's in there, it's, it's gone. It's exactly. Just... 